So I got a new lab server. I wanted to talk about the relevance of the Dell R640, 740, and specifically the 740XD that I'll be showing in this video. And that's a good place to start because I know they're a few years old. But generally speaking, because so many companies need to be on the cutting edge, you can get these at a really good deal. Now, whether or not you want these in your home lab is a little debatable sometimes because of the wattage usage, but there is one thing that is not debatable, and that's the reliability of these servers. So they make a really good, solid choice, not only for a lab, like I'm building it for, for myself, but also for our clients. We've actually bought quite a few of these because a lot of times you need some secondary backup systems. Now, it's always great to have good primary systems, but sometimes you're replacing them with something that's maybe really old. So I can't just demote the previous server because it's actually much slower than one of these Dells, but I can put one of these Dells in for some of our clients and even consulted the other day with someone who bought an entire pallet of Dell R640s that were pretty loaded up just to build in a colo for a secondary backup for things. I think that's a good use case for these. So what I want to do today was go over this Dell server, how I'm using it as our lab and show some of the options and specs that I chose for this and why you might want to consider it as well. Now, this video is not sponsored by our friends at Tech Supply Direct, but that's where we buy a lot of these systems. And the affiliate code I have down below will both help out the channel and give you a discount if you're interested in purchasing these. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, Check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now the Dell R740 XD comes in a couple options. We have the three and a half inch one, but I chose the two and a half inch. I did have a three and a half inch. I just didn't have enough time to do a video on it. And it's pretty slick because it has a mid mount option that allows you to put the drives in the middle. We bought one of these for our clients and I do have a quick video of showing how the mid mount works for the three and a half inch drives. You also have the ability to put the drives in the back. I think this is a cool option. But for the setup that I chose, I wanted a bunch of NVMe drives. Now this is some trade-offs and this storage review article is almost the same setup as I have. So I'll leave that link down below. They have a lot of other details in here that are pretty cool to read through. But essentially what they have here in this graphic is the same setup and the sacrifices that are made by doing it this way. By putting in all these NVMe drives, 12 of them on this side of the system, they're all passed through with these PCI extender cards that are taking up some slots. Because these take up some slots, well, you're going to be limited on what else you can add into this particular system, but I think the trade-off is worth it because I wanted some really fast drives. Now, the rest of the drives are still controlled by the Dell RAID controller. Which brings me to the iDRAC9 Enterprise web interface where you can manage all those drives, see them, and see their statuses. Worth noting, if you're buying this from Tech Supply Direct, it's only a $49 upgrade to go with the iDRAC9 Enterprise version of it. I'd highly recommend that you get the Enterprise version of iDRAC wherever you get your Dells from, uh, gives you all the features and this one's pretty nice. Now I have these two drives here set up as a pair, as a virtual disk. And I just called it group name OS drive. It's just two smaller drives I use for the OS and boot. You can go through and look at all the physical disks right here. And for any of the disks that are not the MVMEs, all the other slots, which for example, I have these two disks here. Uh, you can simply go through and set them to non-RAID if you'd like to. Uh, right now they're set to RAID, so there's not an action item I can do here, but there is the ability if you break the virtual disk to set them to pass through so the OS can handle it. So it's up to you if you wanted to use this for something that was using ZFS, such as TrueNAS, and you wanted these drives to be passed through or not to the system. Uh, that's all configurable right here. Now let's go ahead and jump to the system itself and talk about a summary of everything that's in here. Now, this is the 
first page that you'll see when you log into the iDirect system. You can click this and get the virtual console. I've already got XCPNG loaded on here, and this works well to be able to control it with the essentially lights out management, so you never really have to plug in any type of keyboard or mouse to this. It does have the virtual keyboard option. It does have the virtual media option, so you can connect virtual media, so you don't necessarily have to have a USB in to be able to load something. Uh, this is a really nice feature that are on there, and of course, this is all done through a web interface, so no weird Java applets. It's all the more modern system. Now, I really like the Dell iDirect system because not only does it give you an inventory of all the system, the memory, the status, uh, it also will tell you if there's any problems and you can set up in other configuration any of the notices you may need for letting you know when something goes wrong so there's a lot of options in here that you can dive down deep into and there's a lot of if you're in the enterprise space control information that works with a lot of monitoring software or as i'm doing here i'm just going to send all of it to syslog and parse it from there now onto some of the other specs, we have a pair of Intel 6138 processors that have a base frequency of two gigahertz, but a turbo of 3.7. So these are actually quite fast. We have a core count of 20 on each one of these. And then of course with hyper threading, it's gonna give us a total of 80 threads available on the system, plenty of CPU power. Onto the memory, we have 256 gigs of memory, uh, DDR4. So the details are all provided right here. And I also like that within here, we have the cooling system. Now I bring it up because you can set thresholds and do a lot of fine tuning with it. Uh, you can go to configure it, tells you what status it is on the load for the cooling in here. And of course the Dell fans are easily serviceable and replaceable if it need be. Power of course is provided by dual 1100 watt power supplies. It gives you a status of where they're at. This is something I alluded to in the beginning that yeah, this idles around 200 watts with very little running on it. So you're gonna spend a little bit more in power for these devices, but generally these are designed for heavy workloads. So you can actually run this at a much higher capacity. It can depend on your workload for just how many watts that uses of course, but it will run this reliably. Onto the networking devices, I wanna make sure that you understand not to get the Broadcom one. That has always been a bug when I've had people start complaining about problems they have. It always seems to turn out to be the Broadcom chipsets. Go with the Intel whenever you get one of these used Dells. The one I have in particular here is the SFP Plus, so two 10 gig pairs, Intel i350 controller. There's a couple different options on there you have for the Intel as well, but at least go Intel, just avoid the Broadcom and avoid the headache. As for the software, I'm going with XCPNG on the system, but I'm sure it'll run Proxmox fine, but I did not have time to test that. This is also the system I did the demo video on how to set up ZFS with XCPNG, which is why if you go over here to the advanced tab, you'll see that I've actually allocated a little bit more memory for the control domain. This allows better ZFS caching because that's where I plan to store all my virtual machines because I have the OS boot drive and like its name implies, it's just for the OS and boot. If you go over here to storage, you can see that the R740 local ZFS is set up and I have a 7.85 terabytes available. So plenty of really fast MVME storage for putting all the virtual machines on. Now I've got all the networking defined on this system and I'll be doing a video later about how we build our lab. Essentially, we set up quite a few VLANs on here. That way, as we build out a lot of virtual machines or even virtual PFSense and other firewall software, we're able to set all of this up right down to the WAN that we can emulate to match our client networks. Now, if you're interested in learning about my favorite open source hypervisor, XCPNG, there's an entire playlist you'll find linked down below. I cover topics from getting started all the way to the more advanced topics like setting up ZFS. Like and subscribe to see more content from this channel, including some upcoming lab videos. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Or for a more in-depth discussion, I'd love to have you join the forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com. You can find me there or hit me up on whatever socials you find available at lawrencesystems.com. All right, and thanks. Thank you.